Good morning, card community. It's RJ. Time for part three of my trip down memory lane with the 1983 top set. Uh, thanks for sticking with me if you have stuck with me so far. So let's keep going. All right, so you have <coughs> Enrique Romo, Pirates. I don't know Chris Bando. I'm not sure if he's like a relative of Sal Bando. I don't think so, but doesn't say one way or the other. Uh, Joaquin Andahar, Joaquin Andahar with the Cardinals, long-time quality pitcher for a number of teams. Mostly the Cardinals, actually. Um, Phillies team card, Bo Diaz, high batting average that year. Steve Carlton, obviously the low ERA. And your Fergie Jenkins card with a Super Vet, Hall of Famer there. Tom Bernanski, long-time twin. Wayne Gross. <clears throat> Larry Anderson as a Mariner. Uh, Larry Anderson... Great member of the 1993 Phillies squad, so he's still around 10 years later. Very old at the time. Uh, Larry Anderson didn't get, didn't get up into the majors until late. He was like late 20s before he even made it to the majors. But um, he has a rookie card in the uh, 1978 set, actually. But um, <clears throat> Anderson, famous video if you want to look it up. Uh, Mariners playing the Royals, and Lenny Randall is a fielder, and somebody chops a little dribbler down the third base line. This is it, uh, on a turf field. Anderson pitched it, and uh, the ball's rolling along the foul line, and Lenny Randall, the Mariners, gets down on his hands and knees and starts blowing on the ball to push it foul. Um, I guess there wasn't a rule against it at the time, uh, so they called it foul, big argument, but I think the play stood because... It wasn't a rule against it. I don't think it's a rule. I don't think it's a allowable anymore, but it was quite the video if you want to look it up. Claudel Washington of the Braves. Remember him? Steve Renko of the Angels. He was on a couple different teams all the time. Don't know anything about Dan Norman. Bud Black was a pitcher for a couple different teams. I thought he was in the Pirates at one time. Dave Stapleton, I remember, utility infielder. Rich Gossage, here you go on the Hall of Famer Goose. Uh... Goose from 1972. He's got a super vet card. Joe Nolan, a longtime utility player. Dwayne Walker. Don't know much about him. Have no idea who Dwight Bernard is. Steve Sachs, the golden boy from L.A. Uh, a lot of people thought highly of Steve Sachs, but he just never panned out to be anything other than a you know decent uh, sometime all-star. So, yeah. What are you going to do with Steve Sachs? George Bamberger was the Mets manager at the time. Dave Smith, longtime uh, middle reliever, sometimes starter for a number of teams. Bake McBride, uh, he was on our Phillies uh, team in 1980. He was the right fielder. Uh, obviously, eventually we got rid of him, sent him to the Indians. But he had been around a number of other teams uh, in his career. He was another guy. I saw in the uh, in my senior league baseball set from the late 80s, early 90s, he was a member of one of those teams down there. Another checklist card, Bill Buckner. Enough, you don't need to say too much about Buckner. Everybody knows all about Buckner. Alan Wiggins, don't know much about Alan Wiggins. Uh, Louis, Louis Aguayo, I remember him briefly from the Phillies of the mid-80s. Larry McWilliams, don't know. Rick Cerrone, long-time backup catcher. Uh, mostly I remember him as a Yankee. Gene Garber, one time Philly. He was a uh, Philly pitcher in the middle 70s when we had those great pennants, but he did not make it. He was already passed over in the 80, by the time the 80 team came around. He got his own super vet card. Jesse Barfield, quality outfielder, had a lot of pop for the Blue Jays. Manny Castillo, don't know much about. Jeff Jones, don't know much about. Steve Kemp was a quality outfielder here and there. Larry Herndon and Dan Petrie were the stars on the Tigers that year. Odd that you didn't have Jack Morris up top or uh, Lou Whitaker or Alan Trammell there. Ron Jackson, always want to say I want to get um, start a collection of Ron Jackson cards and try and get every card of Ron Jackson. If you don't know why, you're watching the wrong channel. Just saying. Randy Martin, a longtime um, pitcher. Jamie Quirk, always loved Jamie Quirk's name. Joel Youngblood um, made a video a couple months ago, maybe a couple weeks ago. Uh, unique trivias. Um, Joel Youngblood is an individual who had the unique distinction of getting a base hit on the same day for two different teams in two different cities. 
uh, because of a unique trade situation. And uh, Joel Youngblood is the answer to that trivia question. Uh, got a base hit on the same day for two different teams in two different cities. Paul Boris, Boris, don't know anything about tar Paul Boris. Terry Francona card, this is Terry's second card. He had uh, cards in all the 82 sets, although the Tops 82 was the tri-panel traded, or Future Stars card. Storm Davis, always loved his name. Great pitcher for the uh, Orioles. Dan Oster, I remember briefly. Dennis Eckersley, playing on the uh, Red Sox there. You can see he still has that uh, wicked sidearm delivery. Ed Romero, don't know much about Ed Romero. Frank Tana, long-time pitcher. Mark Belanger. Mark's a guy, another guy who looked really old and crusty all the times. He looked like he had been around too long. Had too many cigarettes, smoked too much booze. <laughs> Mark Belanger always had that look to me. Terry Kennedy, long-time quality catcher and backup catcher. Ray Knight. Ray Knight uh, with the Reds briefly, then here on the Astros. Eventually went on the Mets and was part of that great 86 World Series team. In fact, he won the MVP in the 86 World Series. <coughs> Gene Mock. Gene Mock's one of those managers who should have been in the Hall of Fame. The problem is Gene Mock never won. He never won the World Series. In fact, he never even made it to the World Series as a manager, although he should have been there a number of times. He was the manager of the 64 Phillies when they collapsed. And he was the manager of the 86 Angels when they lost to the Red Sox at the last minute. So <clears throat> even though Gene Mock had been around a long time and had managed in a very successful manager, he never could win the big one, never even got to the World Series as his manager. That's what kept him out of the Hall of Fame. Lance Mullikins, I remember as a quality utility in infielder for a while. Don't know anything about Kevin Hickey. Greg Gross, long time uh, utility outfielder for the Phillies. Hall of Famer Burt, Burt Blylevin. I don't know why Burt didn't have his own uh, super vet card. Burt's another one of those guys who always looked old no matter where he was. Andre Robertson, I remember briefly. Reggie Smith, quality bat. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Al Oliver. Uh, <clears throat> great average hitter, but um, for whatever reason, never made it to the Hall of Fame. He got his own super vet card. Jeff Lottie, no idea. Lance Parrish, great bat for the Tigers. Eventually came to the Phillies. Lance Parrish <coughs> suffered, he was one of the many players, who suffered during the collusion years of the baseball owners in the mid, mid to late 80s when uh, they decided not to sign any big free agents. Uh, the league found out about it, and they sued, everybody was sued, and the Players Association got lots of money. Great book called Lords of the Realm, uh, if you want to read about that scandal. Um, but Lance Parrish suffered through that. Rick Langford, he always looked like an old-style player with that mustache of his. Bobby Brown, this is not the same Bobby Brown that married Whitney Houston, I don't believe. <laughs> Joe Cowley, don't know nothing about Joe Cowley. Uh, Jerry Dzinski, no idea. Jeff Reardon, uh, quality reliever for a number of teams. There's your pirate teams, Bill Madlock and John Candelaria. Craig Swan, longtime pitcher for the Mets. Glenn Gulliver, no idea. Dave Engel, don't know much about Dave. Jerry Remy, I remember, long-time utility infielder. Greg Harris, don't know much about Greg Harris. Ned Yost, I believe Ned's manager these days, Ned Yost. Uh, Floyd Schiffer, don't know anything about Floyd Schiffer. George Wright, don't know anything about George Wright. There's the Mike Schmidt card again. And uh, the Super Vet card. I always remember, um, if you're no tops, one of the things just bring point out while we're dealing with Mike Schmidt right here. If you did tops from the, um, I guess, most of the years of the 60s, 70s, 80s, and into the 90s, tops had a very unique numbering system. All the hundreds cards, like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, they were the star players, the big name players. And then the 50s were the next tier, then the 25s, and then the, all the fives and the zeros were better known players and the rest were sprinkled in just the way they did their numbering so you'd find out all your star players you'd find had a, a card number ending in zero zero ernie witt is now a coach in the philly system depending on what year what level he's gonna be at miguel delone no idea 
Dave Rucker. I thought Dave Rucker was a broadcaster now, but don't hold me to that. There's Larry Boa with the Cubs. Larry Boa. Um, he was with the, with the Phillies in 80, 1980. He, he was on the World Series team, obviously. He was with us in 81, but then, then they traded him before the 82 start. Now, Dallas Green, who was the general manager of the Cubs at the time, had been the manager of the Phillies in 1980. At the end of, the eight, of 79, he was brought in to manage the Phillies, and then he stuck around in all of 80, but he was out right away in 81. He did not want to be the manager anymore. Um, before that, he had been the player development head, so he knew all of the uh, players in the Phillies organization. So we went on to be GM of the Cubs. They got the idea to swap shortstops. We took uh, Yvonne De Jesus from the Cubs. Uh, they got Larry Boa, but Dallas Green, who was the Cub GM, insisted that they throw in an another player. And that second player was Ryan Sandberg, who uh, had played a couple, a handful of games the year before uh, with the Phillies. So, you know, Dallas Green knew him. And he insisted that the Cubs get Ryan Sandberg in the deal, and the rest is history, so to speak. So here you go, Rhino. Tommy Lasorda, manager. And Lou Pinella, still playing it with the Yankees at the time, but obviously went on to have some great success as a manager for a number of clubs. Don't know anything about Jesus Vega. Jeff Leonard, longtime quality outfielder for a number of teams. Greg Luzinski, uh, former Philly. He was with the Phillies in um, the 1980 team. But he also got traded. Like At the end of 81, we just got rid of a whole bunch of people off the Phillies team. So Glenn Brummer. I want to take a moment to talk about this Glenn Brummer card for a minute. So I said the 83 um, Tops set is one of my favorites. It's the first one I ever finished. Because when I was collecting as a kid from 78 through 84, I never was able to accumulate all the cards by buying packs. And there's nobody in my neighborhood who really collected cards besides me, so I couldn't trade with any of the other kids. Uh, but I held on to my cards and just kept them forever. So when I finally got back into cards later in the 80s and into the early 90s, back when the first boom of card collecting was happening... I went to all the shows, went to the fight, found out there were such a thing as card stores and started populating them and um, started looking through the singles boxes that they had back in the day. You don't see too many singles boxes, but they're around still. But um, couldn't find, I found all the cards I needed except this one right here, Glenn Brummer, number 311. He was the one card I could not find, this backup catcher for the Cardinals. And um, I remember distinctly there was a show at a mall once and this guy had uh, an entire 5,000 count box filled with 1983 Topps cards. And he wanted $35 for the box, but he said you couldn't look inside. Now, he, he wouldn't let anybody look through the cards. I'm sure that's because he had taken out all your Sandbergs and Gwens and Boggses. And he didn't want anybody to know that the star cards were gone. He just wanted to get rid of these commons. For all I know, it was like a thousand Glenn Brummers. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's what he was selling all of them for. And I, I would have bought it. I would have paid thirty five dollars to puck it, to get all those cards if, in fact, there was a Glenn Brummer in it. But he wouldn't let me look. So it was a couple more weeks before I was able to find a card store, and it was actually the one I. That's my LCS right now, where I live in Quakertown. Uh, it was there at the time. It's still there now. And he had. I walked in. And asked him if he had. Some 1983 top singles. He said, what do you need? I said, card number 311. He went back to the back of the store. And, you know, like less than a minute, came back and said, here it is. I was like, you know, I was, I, was, I was trying to contain my excitement that he finally had the last card I needed. And um, I asked him how much it was. He said, a nickel. And I dropped my five cents on the counter and snagged that card. And I was giddy with excitement that day, I'll tell you. So, uh, Glenn Brummer was the last card I needed to put this set together years and years and years ago. Going on, you had Brian Kingman of the A's. I always loved Gary Gray. I always wanted to call him Gary Gary. Just uh, look at his name. Ken Daly, don't know much about Ken Daly. Rick Burleson, longtime quality utility infielder. Paul Splittorf, remember Paul Splittorf? Uh, just looking like... He looked like a, a math teacher or something like that who just happened to play baseball on the side. <laughs> I don't know. He's just 
another one of those guys who like, gee, if he can do it, we can all do it, right? At least that's what we think. Gary Rajish, Rajish, I don't know how you spell, pronounce his name. He was one of them, another one of those guys. He had a brother, um, don't remember what his brother's name was, but him and Gary and his brother also ended up in the uh, senior professional baseball league down in uh, down in uh, the Florida area in the late 80s, early 90s. John Tudor, longtime pitcher for a number of teams. He pitched forever, John Tudor. He had some good good years, but um, never made it. Never was Hall of Hall of Fame worthy. But he was he was a quality pitcher in his day. Len Sicata, I remember him hanging around late in the eighties. Steve Rogers, great pitcher for the Expos for many many years. You got Robin Yount, Pete Vukovic were the leaders in the Brewers the previous year. The Brewers went to the World Series that year. Dave Van Gordon, don't know anything about Dave Van Gordon. Luis De Leon, no idea. Mike Marshall. There was a pitcher named Mike Marshall for the Dodgers, too. That always confused the heck out of me. Uh, but there's Mike Marshall, first baseman for the Dodgers in 83. Let's see how much we're going to go. A little bit more before we stop for the day. Von Hayes, still with the Indians. He would become a Philly soon after. He was a long-time Philly. People know him mostly as a Philly now on, but he was start with the Angel of the Indians, excuse me. Garth Org, I, or, Orge, I, Orge, I can't remember how you pronounce his name, but Garth Iorg, great name. If you're looking for a, a baseball player with, with a, the start with an I name, Iorg, a I O R G, Iorg. I always, always remember the name, but I, I've heard it pronounced. It was like Orge or Urge. I can't remember which one it is. Bobby Castillo, no idea who Bobby Castillo is. Craig Reynolds, no idea. Randy Neiman, not so much. Buddy Bell, uh, Buddy Bell, um, part of a long baseball family like the Boons. He had a father, Gus Bell, played in the majors, and his son, De David Bell, I think might still be the manager of the Reds, was in the past, but David was also a third baseman for the Phillies at one time, but there's Buddy Bell's card. Mike Krukow. Played with a couple different teams. I think this is like his one year with the Phillies, though. Glenn Wilson, uh, one of those guys who could slug occasionally but didn't do anything else, and they threw him in the outfield. Dave LaRoche, long-time pitcher. He had a super vet card. So right, I'm going to stop today at the super vet card of Dave LaRoche. So appreciate you coming back and watching again. Like I said, this is just one a day while I'm on vacation, people. I'm, I'm sure I'm not getting many viewers. I, th I think I got like five a day last time, and that's all I'm expecting here. There's no trivia, no nothing. Just going through the 83 set, reminiscing in my past. So I hope you enjoyed it, all right? Please consider like, subscribing, commenting, and all that jazz. And I'll be back again on Monday. Take care.